He knows a lot about the science stuff, Professor Dave explains. Decongestants are a class of drugs that aim to ease breathing when the nose and upper airways are congested. This is typically experienced as an uncomfortable, full or stuffy sensation in your nose, often accompanied by an upper respiratory infection, such as is the case with the flu. Nasal congestion specifically arises from an increase in blood flow in the vasculature of the nose and the associated mucosal membranes, and apart from upper respiratory infections, this can also arise from allergies, excessive dry air, stress, smoking, certain hormonal abnormalities, foreign body exposure, and other causes. To reduce congestion, decongestive drugs aim to restrict the blood flow to the mucosal membranes of the nose. This is achieved by activating the alpha-1 adrenergic receptor located on the smooth muscle of blood vessels in the nasal mucosa. When the alpha-1 adrenergic receptor is activated, the smooth muscle cell contractility increases. This causes vasoconstriction and decreases the luminal space of the blood vessels, thereby reducing the blood flow in these blood vessels and alleviating the symptoms of nasal congestion to some extent. The alpha-1 adrenergic receptor is a G-alpha-Q coupled G-protein coupled receptor. The mechanism of drug-induced increase of smooth muscle cell contractility through agonism at the alpha-1 adrenergic receptor operates through the G-alpha-Q G-protein signaling cascade. This was described in detail when discussing the muscarinic M3 receptor signaling cascade in one of the tutorials on bronchodilators. But to review, this signaling cascade increases the activity of protein kinase C and increases intracellular calcium ion concentration. These effects are synergistic in bringing about increased smooth muscle contractility. It should be appreciated that some G-protein coupled receptor signaling mechanisms are common to many GPCRs in different families. For example, many GPCRs signal through G-alpha-Q, so it's worth being familiar with. Now that we understand how decongestive drugs work at the level of the receptor, what types of drugs are used to activate the alpha-1 adrenergic receptor? The commonly used drugs that directly activate the alpha-1 adrenergic receptor are called adrenergic receptor agonists, but there are also drugs that achieve this effect indirectly by increasing the release of noradrenaline and adrenaline. All of these drugs are sometimes referred to as sympathomimetic drugs because they mimic the sympathetic nervous system. First, let's look at alpha-1 adrenergic receptor agonists. Common drugs of this class include phenylephrine, tramazoline, and oxymetazoline. These drugs are typically taken either orally or in the form of a nasal spray. In general, it could be argued that nasal sprays are superior in this pharmacological context because they increase the local delivery of the drug, thereby reducing any systemic effects that would occur with oral admission and subsequent distribution throughout the body. And second, as we mentioned, decongestant drugs of the other class act by increasing the release of adrenaline and noradrenaline from the sympathetic nervous system towards smooth muscle cells, which then in turn activate the alpha-1 adrenergic receptors. Some may have noticed that when you exercise while experiencing a cold, the increase in circulating adrenaline will often have a decongestive effect, which is one of the benefits of exercising while sick if one is capable. Of course, adrenaline and noradrenaline are relatively unselective and will activate all adrenoceptors, so this is less preferable than selective alpha-1 agonists since drugs without this selectivity will produce side effects associated with the sympathetic nervous system. An interesting example of a sympathomimetic drug is ephedrine. This drug is available over-the-counter, but it has been heavily restricted in many countries due to its chemical similarity and ease of synthesis toward the heavily abused drug methamphetamine. In fact, the U.S., the largest market for pharmaceuticals, passed the Combat Methamphetamine Epidemic Act of 2005, limiting the over-the-counter sale of ephedrine.
And with that, we conclude an introduction to decongestants and to pulmonary drugs in general. Let's move forward and investigate some other classes of drugs. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Support me on Patreon so I can keep making content. And as always, feel free to email me, ProfessorDaveExplains at gmail.com.